Hey guys, this is Max and welcome to another episode of the story behind the shoot. Today's episode is a little bit special because um, you will see photographs that were taken in rather extreme conditions. In the midst of a birch forest, while it was freezing cold and while it started to snow, and we have a model wearing only a summer dress and being actually very cold. <laughs> And in addition to that, there will be no medium format um, shots today, so only 35 millimeter film in this episode. And there's a reason for that, and I will talk to you about that in a second. So let's dive in there and talk all about the idea behind this shoot, the model and the equipment that I used for it. So the idea for this photo set was to have a very delicate young woman in a white dress in the midst of a birch forest, ideally um, with snow on the ground or while it is snowing. And I was really lucky with the weather here, um, so it did snow eventually. And then the idea also was to show a transition from this rather insecure figure to a much stronger version of herself wearing a um, white dress and not being shot on color film anymore, but transitioning towards black and white film and having a rather strong contrast at that. And there was one little additional idea that I wanted to have a transition between these two versions of herself using a double exposure. So having a shot where she would be present um, once um, with a white dress and once with a black dress. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out so great and you will see that in a second and I will explain or try to explain later on what happened and why I screwed up here. With respect to the model, I was allowed to work with the wonderful Sophia, who is um, with Most Wanted Models, a great agency here in Munich and Hamburg. This was our second shoot together, so we had one test shoot before that, and I decided she would be great for this particular Birch Beauty set that I had in mind for quite some time. I am very pleased with her performance. She did a wonderful job. She also contributed significantly to the success of this photo set by um, helping to select the appropriate dresses by making suggestions for the makeup and also then eventually doing the makeup herself, which I always appreciate if a model kind of brings herself and her creativity into the set as well. And we managed to create this collective vision of what we want to achieve. Um, with respect to the equipment, as mentioned in the introduction, I um, shot only 35 millimeter film this time. And the main reason here is, of course, that I wanted to work as fast and efficient as somehow possible. And I couldn't see myself standing in the midst of a forest, having a model that is literally freezing and then fussing around with some medium format roll of film, trying to get that into my Mamiya RZ67 or something like that. So I decided, okay, I need something that is very fast, ideally that has um, auto film advance and maybe even autofocus. So I settled as a primary camera for the Canon 30V and there's a review up on the channel of that camera if you're interested and the 85 millimeter f 1.8 Canon standard lens. So not an L lens, nothing special, but in my opinion, a really great performer. And um, just if you're interested, I shot the lens mostly stopped down to uh, 2.5 or 2.8. So um, shooting Kodak Portra 400 as a color film, I'm rated at ISO 200. And there my shutter speeds ranged between 1 90th of a second and 1 um, 1 25th of a second. And um, some Kodak T-Max 400 also rated at ISO 400 with the um, appropriate shutter speeds. Um, so rather um, 1 250th of a second here in most cases. I used my Gaussian Starlight 2 um, light meter to occasionally check the exposure and make sure that everything stays the same. And in addition to that, I used um, for wide angle shots, my father's old Minolta XD7 using a 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens that I really, really like and enjoy using. 
and that I'm also using by the way to take this video right now. So it's a really great lens, a great performer and also stopped down to f2.8 in most of the shots that you will see. And I also use this camera for the double exposure because what's great about the Minolta X-T7 is that it has a little button at the bottom plate um, that lets you um, kind of disconnect the film advance um, and the um, shutter cock basically. And uh, so you advance, uh, you don't advance the film, but only cock the shutter, and then you can do another shot, take another shot, the regular multiple or double exposure, whatever you need to do. So um, without further ado, let's take a look at the behind the scenes footage and some of the photographs, and then talk a little bit about um, my impressions from this shoot.
So as you could see, the model did a wonderful job. She was really, really tough there, <laughs> um, standing in the midst of this um, freezing cold forest. We only took one break in between, which was basically to get her back to the car, warm up and to change to the black dress. And um, then she came back out there and uh, actually had to change dresses at some point in the forest because of the double exposure, unfortunately. So that was tricky. And as you could see, I messed up the double exposure, as you can see here. And uh, the reason is that I um, didn't use a more stable connection between my um, tripod and the camera and that I didn't use a cable release. I brought a cable release and I intended to use it, but I, for some reason, uh, maybe I was nervous or maybe it was too much at that particular moment in time, I forgot to actually um, screw it in there. and. Uh, it didn't come to my mind even when the model was standing there and I had to press the shutter and as you can see in the image the camera must have slightly turned between the two shots and that of course kind of spoils the whole idea of having a very consistent background and having only these two figures change or suddenly have the same person as in two different dresses in the image. So I, I won't really use that um, in the final image set but nevertheless um, it was worth a try and it was some uh, additional experience gained, so um, nothing lost. Besides that, I'm really pleased with the results. I like the look of Kodak Portra um, 400 as it came out here. The kind of colors it was, um, pos it was possible to create with this particular film. And um, I'm always overwhelmed by the kind of look that you can get with this 85 millimeter portrait lens on the Canon 30V or any other Canon body for that um, matter. So I really, really appreciate that lens. And I don't have any hard feelings about not using medium format for this particular set. I really like how it turned out. And yeah, I'm incredibly grateful that we were lucky with the weather and that the model kind of played along and had even fun doing it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the story behind the shoot. If you have any comments, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. As you know, we always really appreciate it. And please don't jump at me for not using the cable release. I'm completely aware that I should have done that this time. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you like this video, please also remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channels. We have all sorts of interesting camera reviews and also stories behind the shoot coming up. So thanks for watching.